All right, let's jump back in here and continue to ink this character. So again, just throwing in little bits of rendering lines here and there, kind of texturizing in a sense. Um, so I do recommend, uh, you know, again, kind of keeping that outer line thicker and then generating some interior lines and some rendering that vary it up, that help to convey some of these forms. So, uh, you know, some little line breaks, some little thinner lines and things like that, just a little bit of rendering. So let's go ahead and get the, the shoe here rendered. Hold R to rotate the screen, get it just right. So again, I'll kind of repeat this process of stopping at each connection point just to get the shapes in place. R for rotate. I'm also passing through these areas with you know, a bit of speed. Uh, so I'm, I'm always going to kind of reiterate that, that I think really learning what speed versus the distance you are away from your canvas is very important. So I call it the mechanics. I don't know if it would be better classified as a almost ergonomics or something based upon your relationship to the screen. But I really feel like that's one of the things that allowed me to start getting better at this stuff, that I had to vary up the speed intensity in which I create certain lines. So you can see I struggle with this curve. It's more the wear, the, the wear of it, like where I stopped versus trying to connect that. And sometimes I have to make uh, compromises when doing things like that. Like uh, if I can't create that line, then I have to generate it some other way. I have to rotate around and get a better angle. So I'm constantly moving the screen around uh, trying to figure that out. Uh, so let's go up here now. Oh, back to black. Let's get the collar of the shirt. So again, and also I don't pull lines side to side really well. So that's why you're going to always see me rotate the screen. Uh, basically where I'm pulling a little, little bit more vertically or quite a bit more vertically on the canvas. Uh, and that works with paper as well. So when I'm making on paper, I'm constantly rotating my uh, my page. And that's one of the reasons why when I started digitally inking, I really had to follow the programs that had rotation. In the beginning, they didn't all support it. So it really dictated which program I would use. Okay, so let's zoom in here a bit. Now with the face, again, I want this kind of, you know, clean, readability to the face, so very little to no rendering. One thing I will say too, because this is a common question with uh, people trying to ink faces, uh, you know, I'm always going to say less is more, for one. Uh, so think stylized, and uh, but also as you get further away from the, uh, the face of the character, you have to simplify more. You have to start using shadows more, uh, or line weight, you know, and or I guess, but the main thing is, is that you don't try to get in here. For instance, you're not going to get in here and detail an eye. You're going to just draw the top uh, shadow to the eye, top line, very little to the bottom of the eye, and then a pupil. So it's going to become more stylized. And the further you get away from the character, the more that happens to where a face from a distance becomes just very basic lines, a shadow under the nose, a line for the mouth, maybe eyebrows, you know, kind of the same here because this is a simplified face. And then if this was a face that was very close, like a cover shot, then obviously you can get in here and you can start detailing away and doing all this fancy rendering and, and detail work. But again, remember that if it's further away, you're going to simplify and you're going to start to group things together based upon uh, shadow or line weight. So, for instance, to define this nose, I'm just going to get the shadow under the nose. I'm almost not even drawing a nose. It's just the reaction of the shadow. Very simplified here. It's the shadow under the lip, not the lip itself. The teeth, and then the shadow in the mouth. So, again, this is a, a simplified, almost cartooning type uh, approach to get the information to read and then not overthink the process. It also really speeds you up because, you know, we tend to like try to overdraw everything. 
and it slows us down. It actually hurts the work a lot of times. So you have to try to think about it and go, you know, what what would read this or what would uh, convey this message in the least amount of lines and the least amount of shapes. Uh, the more you can do that, I think the more proficient you become. And, uh, you know, it really takes the stress out of trying to, you know, render all this stuff. And again, overdrawing things that really uh, takes an absorbent amount of time and ultimately hurts the work. Now for darker hair, I would fill in more of this. I think I kind of alluded to that when I uh, started inking the, uh, the girl's hair. She has more what I would consider lighter, fair hair in this, uh, this one. But if we wanted this character to have darker hair, then one good way to do that is just fill in more of it. It uh, kind of makes the uh, coloring process easier as well. It just basically shows the colorist that it's dark hair because if it was all um, open lines, then it would usually read as a lighter, lighter hair color. But obviously coloring uh, can, can really take care of that as well. So you can really convey dark hair with uh, just a few shapes. But generally you're going to fill in more of it like this. And the neat thing about this is you can really convey uh, a neat light source by doing this. So you see I'm shading from the bottom. I'm kind of perceiving that there's this highlight hitting the top of the head. I could really get in here and I could do all sorts of things. I could show more of the separation of the hair. Uh, I could get as creative as I want to right there. But I think I'll just go with this and maybe a few little lines here and there. Because if you use all just shapes, then you really don't convey uh, the separation in the hair. But again, sometimes less is more, so start with less and then maybe just add a couple little rendering lines. Okay, let's double click that and straighten out the canvas. So again, you know, you can see there's not very much rendering to that face and into the hair even. I actually don't like that shape, so I'm going to bring that together like that. Um, but it, it gets the message across. So now, let's see what else we got for the character here. We got that little Saturn shape. Shows he's uh, an astronaut of some kind. Now with circles, I think I've already mentioned, it's really easy to just generate circles with digital art. I still do my best to create them by hand. But you see I'm struggling pretty bad. But the other thing is, getting in closer should help. Sometimes ghosting over it and also changing the brush size. So that one's a bit better right there. Something like that. And we can put the shadow under the foot here that kind of connects the uh, character to the ground. It also pushes the heel away from the ground. So if we start the shadow tighter here like that but then as it gets back here it turns into line work it shows that his heel is raised off the ground so again this is where I kind of mentioned like shadows can really propel areas of the work uh, you know off the page it's very important to kind of play around with these even if you're not into shadow heavy type artwork it's still very important to practice because it it um, you know, teaches you about depth, creating the illusion of depth on the page. And notice I'm tapering these lines uh, thinner as they fade off, so pretty much as, as I would perceive a gradient to occur like this. Now I am veering off the character, so I gotta be aware of that, but I am gonna merge this together anyways. But again, whenever you start to do this, you have to remember that because if you start bouncing around from the background to the character to another character, uh, and you're working off layers, it can get a little bit messy. So just you know, make mental notes of uh, when you decide to jump off one area of the work to another. And I actually recommend that you do work on a certain area to finality so like you know whether it be the characters or the background hopefully the way that I've 
kind of showed you throughout the process because what happens is it really allows you to gauge how much time you're spending on a certain area and ultimately that will allow you to figure out where you need to improve what you need to focus on as you press forward so you might be really quick at inking the backgrounds but characters take you forever you're constantly in doubt about the way the characters read things like that but uh, but if you time yourself if you're aware of it then uh, you might be able to analyze it a little bit better and sometimes it's just a matter of not dwelling over something too much you know allowing yourself to kind of draw through it and be okay with mistakes uh, sometimes you'll actually get really good work that way but it's it's hard to tell ourselves that in the beginning because we're so concerned with being better okay so now if we take this and toggle that off you can see we've got the character inked there we can hit command E merge them into the you know predominant area of this uh, we've still got little things like the inks against the screen stuff like that so these are just kind of swirling lines so I just vary up the pressure so push a little harder a little softer and kind of float through these areas I, I think kind of like a a chrome or a swirling uh, you know swirling kind of glare through the middle of it and you can really put these anywhere on a on a design like this they can be half moon shapes like back here we could do a little half moon a couple little lines through it all sorts of neat little things we got some rendering back here we can add to the door so this is really the point where I just kind of do a final pass and you know just touch up things I might have missed start toggling off oops, didn't mean to create that line there start toggling off the visibility uh, to this line work here and then ultimately go back through and do one more pass to uh, to thicken up the lines so let's go ahead and wrap up right here we'll head over to the next lesson and we'll do just that we will go ahead and toggle this off and we'll do our final cleanup of the inks that we have here so with that let's move on